Good morning everyone. It's getting on to about 10 o'clock in the morning here on Friday the 18th of November 2022. Well in yesterday's video I showed uh, how the wind had filled in nicely and we were doing some great sailing. As the day progressed, the wind kept increasing. Uh, nothing whatsoever about that whole weather scenario in the forecast that I got from Windy before I left. Anyway, as the day progressed, eventually I went down to, uh, took a couple reefs in the mainsail and then the wind increased some more. So I dropped the mainsail entirely because it was generating too much weather helm. And we were cooking along, still making between five and six knots with the Genoa and the stay sail. Oops, gotta hold on here. And then of course, as uh, Often happens when out sailing like this, and people who have done a fair amount of sailing, I'm sure, have experienced the same thing. Along comes a squall, and when does it come? Three o'clock in the morning, of course. And the wind gets right up there, 25, 30 knots, gusting a little bit more, a little bit of rain. And the Genoa and the staysail are overpowering the boat together. So I hove to, got the Genoa down, got it lashed, and uh, started steering the boat by hand with just the staysail because the sea state had gotten just crazy with the cross swells and the short steep seas that had built up because of the squall coming really made it difficult uh, for the autopilot my rudimentary autopilot to handle the constantly shifting conditions so I wound up hand steering for about I don't know three hours or so till the sun came up and by that time I was pretty well worn out and so was uh, Dee Dee because we had both been up and running around on deck and hanging on for dear life and such like that because of the motion not the strength of the wind so I decided our best bet would just be to, because uh, we have clear space, many miles all the way around us, just heave to for a while. So I hope to, under the stay sail on the starboard tack, we were drifting off generally in a westerly direction at about two knots, and got a couple hours sleep. Well, that refreshed me and recharged the battery. Now the wind, uh, that squalliness, has died off but that squall lasted a lot longer than a normal squall and seemed to bring in this uh, change in the weather so it's still pretty cloudy all the way around overhead there was some clear sky last night but not a whole lot 
and that continues today. The main advantage now being that conditions have stabilized enough where I can get the boat sailing again and the autopilot working. I've been trying to get the wind vane going again. I gotta re-remember or remember how to get it all set up properly to steer the boat. It does quite a good job actually, but uh, it's been years since I did any long distance sailing with the wind vane. I'll get it figured out, no problems there. Anyway, so now we're still sailing with just a stay sail. Making somewhere in the range of four and a half knots and based on the sea state, because we got greenies out there. Now, you don't usually get greenies unless it's blowing 25 knots. And sitting here, well, protected in the cockpit, it doesn't feel like the wind is blowing anywhere near 25 knots. However, like I said, based on the sea state, we're getting waves. Oh, easily six feet. Maybe once in a great while, as much as eight feet. And uh, got white horses everywhere with uh, occasionally green tops. And that almost always means that it's blowing at least 25 knots. Anyway, I'm gonna take the uh, video off of me and put it out on the water for a little bit. So you can kind of see what it looks like, of course, Anytime you take a picture of the waves, they, they always flatten out and you never get a real good impression of what they look like. The only way to really see that is in person. Don't have good 3D technology on phones yet, so. But it'll give you a look. Anyway, we continue on our passage. Our days run from yesterday to today until today is probably going to be all shot to hell because of uh, flying ho two for three hours or something like that and bobbling around out here. My first day was only 60 miles because I spent a good portion of the earlier part of the day going completely in the wrong direction chasing after the wind which did eventually fill in as we got further west. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, here I go. Okay, there is Dee Dee diligently killing something again. I'm playing Candy Crush. Oh, Candy Crush. There you go. Crush the Candy. Are you crushing in them? Yes. Oh, she's a crusher. Anyways, here we are looking aft. That's about to the east northeast. That's where the wind is coming from. Maybe here I'll get one of those big cresting waves that comes up right astern. You can see some of them out there. And like a that's a pretty good sized one. That's six, seven feet anyway. Unfortunately, of course, in a video, always tends to flatten the seas. And even sitting here on the windward side, ooh, look at that one. That got pretty big. That was a good eight foot crest there. That's six feet. It sure doesn't feel like uh, 25 knots of wind. But one of the ways that you can tell, other than getting greenies, is the sort of semi calm patches of water between the waves. Instead of being perfectly smooth, they'll have little cat's paws. 
of waves on that surface. Now you see cat's paws when it's almost dead calm and the wind is blowing about two knots. It makes cat's paws on the surface. But when it's blowing 25, it makes similar cat's paws on the calm surfaces between the big waves. And you won't get that when the wind is down around 15 or even 20 knots. But you will get it when it's 25. Along with the white horses and the greenies. Uh, greenies are a sure sign that it's blowing 25. Anyway, over here is one of my lines. I have rigged to the wheel. I have one on each side to hold the wheel in place because the brake, no matter how tight I make it by hand, will not absolutely lock the wheel in place. And with these waves pushing the stern of the boat around, pushes it sideways through the water, the water pressure on the rudder will turn the wheel even with the brake set as hard as I can make it. So I got these two little tackles set up. That's just a sail hank on each end, uh, on that end, and a snap shackle on the other ring, and an old D-ring uh, that I've got put on the Dodger base, and a little piece of six millimeter line on a uh, cam cleat block. Makes it real easy to adjust if I want to crank a little bit of helm in. Now the red marker is supposed to be in the center, but I got one whole spoke turned to starboard. And I'm beginning to think that one of the problems that we had uh, handling the boat was my insistence on steering it and always having that red mark top dead center. Well, I'm beginning to think I put that on because it's just a piece of Velcro one spoke in the wrong place. I can't really tell because I can't climb over the stern of the boat or look at the rudder to see where it is from on deck. And I could go down below and tear into the cabinetry where I could see the quadrant to see if it's centered now or not. But that just seems like too much trouble because the boat seems to steer quite well now, staying pretty much on course. I mean, it does vary. You can't help that because it's autopilots are reactionary, just like wind vanes. They can't be proactive, only reactive. And with this big sea running, Occasionally they come in on the corner or even on the beam and do really push the boat around. Anyway, for right now, Friday morning, signing off. Well, it's three o'clock on Friday afternoon. The 18th of November. And sanity has returned. You would think by looking out there on the water. Nice gentle breeze. Eh, maybe a shade over 12 knots. Most of the monster waves have laid down. The sky is sort of clear. There's still a lot of clouds out there. So... Right now, we're having a delightful sail. I finally got the wind vanes sorted out. So it's steering the boat pretty well. Also seem to have made some progress here on the wheel. I got about a half a spoke there turned to the right. It may be, because I took the whole system and the quadrant apart doing maintenance and lubrication and stuff back in uh, the Philippines sometime before we left. And it may be that uh, 
when I put it back together, I retightened the adjustment bolts for the cables, and I might not have done it and kept the wheel centered. I don't know. It's another thing I'll have to check when I get into port. But it seems to require that half turn for the wind vane to uh, function properly. The whole system really and the balance on the boat is quite sensitive. Um, I was joking with Dee Dee that she goes from the cockpit down to the galley, a matter of moving about four feet four and aft and a little bit of thwart chips. It actually changes the trim of the boat, and uh, that'll knock it off course for a while until it compensates. Now, if we both went up to the bow, it may alter the trim enough that the boat, or the wind vane, wouldn't be able to compensate for the change in trim of the hull. So anyway, since conditions are quite similar to what they were yesterday afternoon when we were having such a delightful sail, with the full mainsail and the staysail and the Genoa romping along, right now we're making about four and a half knots. Yesterday we were making uh, over five, sometimes getting pretty close to six. So you might say to yourself, or to me, Fred, why are you being so timid? There's plenty of daylight left. Conditions are very moderate. But as Paul Harvey, the famous old radio announcer out of Chicago used to say, and then there's the rest of the story, which I'll show you right now. Over that away is kind of uh, the way the camera's pointed. It's a little bit west and north. I'm trying to hold a, pretty much a due westerly course. But flip over 180 degrees and got this dark and brooding sky, which is like a huge squall line from up forward all the way amidships that's about to the south and extends way way back there i can see the rain coming down out of the clouds right now but none of the clouds seem to be moving very quickly so i'm hoping that means we're not going to get pelted with a 25 to 40 knot wind squall to go along with that uh, line of clouds and rain and that my friends is why I'm being so timid with the sails because I don't want to get caught out with all those sails up and then get blasted by a squall a strong wind squall rain can live with that get blasted with something up in the 30 knot range with all that sail out it'd be a real scramble to get things down and wrapped up and all that kind of stuff so better to be a little conservative it's still making good time if I can average for the whole duration of the trip 100 miles a day that's pretty good noon yesterday until noon today even though we were hove to for about three hours and did a lot of jogging around, I still managed to knock out 105 miles. So we kind of had to do that again the early part of the day. That will count towards the noon run from today until tomorrow. But conditions were just starting to settle down a bit by about 10 o'clock this morning. The wind continued to get lighter and uh, the biggest of the seas started to lay down. So life aboard has become much more comfortable with which uh, my sweetie agrees.
as she's over there killing little pieces of candy or something. <laughs> or maybe watching a movie. No, she doesn't have her earphones in, so she's not watching a movie. Anyway, I'll sign off now. Until probably tomorrow. Bye for now. Woo! Mm -hmm.